What's going on, everybody? It's David from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you'll see a Patreon account. You click to become a member. All you got to do is try recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to, so click the link. Now, with that being said, I'm going to kind of give you guys uh, a personal experience that happened with me and uh, Nev Campbell at Monster Palooza. So, Remember you guys heard that news uh, all last week talking about Nev Campbell isn't going to be in Scream 6, which is absolutely 100% true. And you saw the article. The most of the article said Nev Campbell was talking with fans at Monster Palooza and she told them that she's not going to be in Scream 6, da 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 Yeah, that's true, right? But the thing is, I was there, all right? So I'm going to give you exactly what happened run, down, run by run down, you know what I'm saying? So truth be told, Nev Campbell was talking to me at Monster Palooza when she said that, right? I'm going to give you guys a scenario and tell you guys what happened. So waiting in line, we're waiting to see Nev Campbell, and I have my poster ready to sign. And, you know, you're kind of getting, like, kind of nervous stuff because you're meeting people that are famous. So we're thinking about what you want to say. And we're literally right there. Then, like, two people end up getting in front of us. I don't know why. Maybe they came back from the previous day because they didn't get autographs. I don't know the situation. Um, but they hopped in line, got the autographs, took their pictures, and then, and then bounced. And then we were up, so we walked up to her. And the first thing I told her is, like, you know how she's doing. She said she's doing fine. And then I asked her, hey, so, you know, are you ready? You ready for Scream 6? And she's like, mm. And I'm just like, oh, you can't talk about it? Is it sort of some sort of contract thing? You know, like, if you can't talk about it, cool. And she said, no, nah, it's not that. She was like, I'm not going to be in Scream 6. Like, literally like that. And I'm like, her? like you're not going to be in stream six and then all of a sudden i swear you hear people in the background like wait what did she say what huh what what did she say huh what what and she's like yeah i was telling him that i'm not going to be in scream six and they're like what why what no and i was like so how come you're not going to be in scream six and she goes well you know they don't want to pay me and i'm like Fair enough. I mean, you know, people know, you know, your worth, uh, you know what you're worth. So if they don't want to pay you and you don't feel like what they're offering you isn't fair, then by all means, you have the right to turn it down. Uh, that's the way it works. That's the way freaking. That's the way it works. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you can't argue with that. Now. It has come to uh, the light that apparently um, she was offered four million dollars. I don't know how true this is. Because again, you have to be very, very careful with these sources. I don't think it came from the studio. It came from like a Twitter page or something, Scream fans or something. I don't remember. But to the point, it said that she was offered $4 million to be in one scene for like less than four minutes or something like that. And they're basically saying like, oh, she's being like Hollywood or whatever. And you've had Matthew Lillard and Jamie Kennedy both come out and say, you know what? She has they they're lowballing her. If she feels like they're lowballing her, she has every right to basically ask for the amount of money that she wants. Uh my man, why am I drawing a blank right now? Top Gun Maverick. What Top Gun Maverick? Why am I drawing a blank? What's his name? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise came back and he was able to negotiate and he was able to kind of like get what he wanted. And here's the thing. You have to understand the last screen movie did pretty freaking well when nobody expected it to do well at all. Everybody was trashing this movie. They didn't think it was going to be good. And, you know, based off of what we had with the previous screen movies, nobody really gave a shit. But with the return of the legacy characters, you had people putting their butts in the seat and actually coming to go watch the movie. So you have to attribute that success to the return of the legacy characters. And more, more importantly, Nev Campbell, right? Yeah, sure, Courtney Cox was cool. Yeah, sure, Skeet being in there was cool. That's awesome. But at the end of the day, Nev Campbell was the reason why motherfuckers went and go sat down. You know what I mean? Because Nev Campbell has become one of the most iconic screen queens out there. She has become one of the most final girls, like one of the most important final girls out there. She's up there to me, in my opinion, with Jamie Lee Curtis in regards to being a final girl, one of those top tier, top five. She's in that category. You have to give her her flowers. So with that being said, her name puts asses in the seats because she her name is synonymous with this franchise. They should just pay her what she wants. And I've seen on the internet motherfuckers talking about like, hey man, you know what? Mm -hmm. 
you know, she's being uh, whatever. She's like asking for too much. She's doing too much. She acting like she's important. Damn right. She's important. If you go look at the, if you go look at the, the numbers, I mean, the other movie did very well, pay the woman what she's worth. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to look, if you don't put the money in and you don't pay these people what they're worth, they're not going to come back. And your franchise is going to die. I guarantee you, if she's not going to be in this movie, this movie is not going to do as well as the previous movie. And that's a guaranteed a stamp. I'm saying that shit right now. All right. Anyway, me and them kept talking. We also talked about some other things. I asked her about Twisted Metal, right? And with Twisted Metal, she said that she was kind of surprised that I asked her that. I was like, so Twisted Metal, right? I was like, how's that going? And she was like, oh, she was like, oh, she's like, oh, you heard about that? I'm like, yeah, of course. And she's like, yeah, Anthony Mackie is amazing. She just finished shooting some scenes. And yeah, she, she seems very excited about it. And she says that it's going to be a really great project. And she's happy for people to go watch it. So keep your eyes out for Twisted Metal. Moving on. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys more different scenarios that I had at Monster Palooza with this dumbass cat in the background crying. I hope you guys can't hear it. Fucking horny ass cat. Annoying as shit. Anyway, all right, so moving on. Uh, some of the people that we met, we're gonna jump, we're gonna go by rows, right? I'm just gonna recap my monster Palooza experience. I wanted to kind of highlight that, but I'm gonna just go ahead and recap my monster Palooza experience as well, too. Uh, first person we met was Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley was a very excellent person, cool to talk to, easy to talk to, very uh, approachable, uh, very down to earth. Uh, took pictures with us, signed autographs, really nice guy, excellent all around. Um, can't wait to actually run across him again he says he's working on some horror movie i guess but he can't disclose what it is and what the details of it are so we will be seeing bill mosley hopefully on the screen very soon um next person we ran across was uh doug bradley now doug bradley holds a very dear special place in my heart because doug bradley is one of the reasons why i love horror movies i bought hellraiser and I brought Hellraiser 2. And I watched those movies and I became obsessed with the freaking franchise. And because of that, I wanted to buy all the movies. And I watched every single Hellraiser movie in middle school. Every single one of them. I watched all of them, right? And I even went on some freaking huge mission to try to find Hellraiser 3, which was out of print at the time. And it was a freaking mission to try to find. And I think two years later, I ended up randomly running across it at a... Uh, at Target, and I bought it immediately because I was like, yo, like, I was looking for this movie forever, and yeah, anyway, to the point, Doug Bradley, uh, meeting him, I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't what I expected, I really thought that he was gonna be a little bit chatty, I thought he was gonna be a little bit more enthusiastic, you know, um, Doug is a man all by himself, he's literally working a table by himself, um, charging people, uh, he's the one making the transactions, he doesn't have an assistance, if you buy a shirt, he's gonna go get it, if he, you buy some CDs, he's going to go get them. He's digging in bins, flipping through things. Like, he's working by himself. So, shout out to Doug Bradley for doing that. But, you know, he wasn't as enthusiastic as I was. Hope, I would hope. You know, my, my wife was just like, you know what? It might be because he's a little up there in age. Maybe he was being acting like he was in character. But, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I just expect a little bit more chatter out of him, especially because we as the fans come all this way to see you and we're paying you money to take pictures with you and get these autographs. Come on, man. At least have a cool little conversation with me at least. But one person um, that did hold a very interesting conversation was Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder was one of my freaking favorite people other than Matthew Lillard at the uh, at the Monster Palooza. Kane Hodder is, if you guys ever get a chance to meet Kane, I would definitely say meet him because he talks so much shit. Um, literally. And I'm not playing. So story time. Um, we met Kane at a monster palooza and he's like oh i'm about to go take a shit and we're just like oh you would do this as soon as we walk up to get our autographs but i was like go ahead handle your business then he's like what are you fucking disgusting and I, he, he's literally saying this shit what are you fucking disgusting i'm not gonna take a shit in public you take a shit in public and i was like well you know if you gotta go you gotta go you know i'm not gonna sit here and hold it and uh huh all right anyway so yeah so we were having this huge dialogue and this huge back and forth about bodily movements or whatever. It can't just be cool. He's just shooting the shit. We're just talking crap back and forth. He's a really nice guy. He's really down to earth. We took a picture with him. Um, 
Also, the final girl from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 walks up. And she's talking to Kane, and we're well, she jumps in our conversation. We're all talking. He involves her in a conversation. We're all chit-chatting or whatever. And eventually we take the picture with Kane and we have her jump into the conversation, which is really, really cool. Uh she she jumped into the conversation and she jumped into the picture with us. And she took a picture with me and my wife, Kane, and her. And it's funny because she goes, like, Well, um, do you know who I am? And I'm like, No. <laughs> And she's like, I'll give you a hint. Me and him did a movie together. And I'm like, well, shit. Like, I thought Friday the 13th, Hatchet, what? She's like, no, from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, I was the final girl. And I was like, oh. I was like, I haven't seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 in a long ass time, to be honest with you. It's been a very, very long time since I've seen that. But she was really cool. She was really friendly. She was very, very cool. Uh, it was fun meeting those two. Um, moving on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that picture is awesome. And then, um, yeah, Kane choked the shit out of me in the picture. He has this habit of doing that, I guess. Um, <laughs> moving on, um, we also met Tom Savini. Tom Savini was dope. All right, so that's us. And dude, you can't see shit because it's light. Let me see. There we go. All right, so anyway, that was us at uh, Monster Palooza. Anyway, so yeah, so we were just, um, that was us at Monster Palooza having fun. It was really fun. Uh, next person we met, Tom Savini. Tom Savini was real cool, easy to approach. We had to find this damn booth because it was a freaking maze trying to find it. We're walking around the damn place looking for a count of numbers on the little wall. And all of a sudden, you just run across him and you're just like, oh, there he is, Tom Tom Savini. He was cool. He took a picture with us. He made sure that he uh, he was the one that held the phone and took the selfie. Uh, he, he was really nice. He was really cool. Um, wanted to have more of a conversation with him, but I don't know. He had a line, so it's okay, though. Um, next up, we already talked about Nev. Uh, Robin. Robin. Robin from uh, The Craft, which reminds me, I forgot to talk about something from Nev Campbell about The Craft. Remember what she told me? Robin told me about uh, Pregnant. Oh, because of uh, the, craft. the Craft. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, my wife is sharing that Rob, because of Robin, Skeet got famous because he didn't have any acting career until the craft and they were like best friends they're like tight i should have told her to take us to his table huh damn we should have told her missed the opportunity so another cool thing that i was asking i was asking about the craft right and i asked robin about the craft and i was like well the only reason we watched the new craft movie was because we thought that you were going to be in it and she goes yeah i was pregnant at the time and i they told me they wanted me to be in the movie but i was pregnant and i wasn't really trying to do it now nev was funny though I brought it up to Nev and I was like, hey, you know what? Like, we only watched the craft movie because we thought that the original cast was going to pop up somewhere. And she's like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. We read the script and that script looked really bad. I, I We passed on it. And I was like, hmm. So yeah, she said the script was trash. Basuda. Boo boo. Right? Which it was, to be honest with you. And um, it was a waste of old boy from uh, X Files, but it's okay. Um, and Nev Campbell said that they sent her the script for it and they wanted them to be in it, but she turned it down. I guess Farouja Balk was the only person that actually took the, t- took the, accepted the role. But I think Farouja Balk even said she's never even watched that damn movie. She did the role and she hasn't even watched it. So that's crazy to even think about. Uh, money grab. Anyway, so um, who's next? We did Nev Campbell. We did Robin. We met uh, then Bill Mosley, Kane, Doug Bradley. Oh and we met Jamie Kennedy. All right, so we met Jamie Kennedy, and Jamie Kennedy is cool as hell, right? Jamie Kennedy's funny. Every, when he came back from his break, everybody was waiting there for a really long time. He came back. He hyped up everybody. He was really friendly. Uh, I, I made a joke with him and told him, like, hey, man, you know, you stop representing the Malibu. And he starts doing the freaking uh, the accent, like the little dialect. Freaking hilarious. Jamie Kennedy bought all into it, and he was just talking just like B-Rat. Most of the time, it was freaking hilarious. Um, after that, like I said, we met Matthew Little. Matthew Little was also cool. Uh, he came back late as shit from his break, though. And because he came back late as hell, because he came back late as hell from his break, look, that's me. That's me right there representing. Anyway, um, we came back. We came back late. He came back late. Matthew came back late as shit. 
from his break. And because he came back late, we weren't able to get in the skeets line early enough in order to get his autograph, which sucked a lot. But anyway, to the point, um, we ended up waiting in line for Matthew. When he finally showed up, we took a picture together. And Matthew's a really nice dude. So Matthew gave me a hug or whatever. He gives me a hug or whatever. And I hug him back. And I'm like patting his back. He's patting my back. And I'm patting his back hard as fuck. Like, I'm saying, I don't know what the hell got over me, but I'm smacking this man's back. Like, there's like, like, it's a life or death situation and he choking and I need to save him. Like, I'm burping this man right now. I'm smacking the shit out of him, right? And he's like, damn, man. Why? He's like, hey, why are you hitting me so hard, man? Like, you know, his little goofy little surfer boy voice. And I was like, hey, man, it's all good, though. And I was like, my bad. I was like, it's a, it's a black church thing, you know? And he just starts fucking busting up because I'm like, oh, sorry, it's a black church thing. He just starts busting up. Oh, yeah. And then, I have a cool video. But and then Kane and freaking that. Matthew. Kane walks up and, like, hugs Matthew. And they take a picture together and shit. And everybody's getting mad at Kane because he hopped in the line and, like, took advantage of it. His celebrity status. It was funny. Um, and then, um, so, going back to the Kane situation. Speaking of Kane. After we had this long, funny-ass conversation, I'm like, damn. I wish I would have recorded it. I wish somebody would have recorded that conversation. I'm always like, yeah, hmm, yeah, sure. I know, right? And then she just pops up her phone like, boom. <laughs> she recorded the whole damn conversation. It was so funny, dude. Uh, let me see if I can play a little bit of it for you right now. Hold up. Ask if I ever shit in public, and I don't. Do you? Like in public in the bathroom? Yes, not out on the sidewalk. <laughs> You gotta go, you gotta go. It's worse to hold it in. Well, you don't have to have a digestive shit when you get up in the morning, first thing. But when you're gone all day and you're like at work, at school, doing. You sit on the fucking bowl that all these other asses have No, you gotta go to the bowl. You gotta at least squat, for sure. Torpedo. You are disgusting. Who brought up. So, do you like his beard or? Kane's a fucking asshole, man. Kane's an asshole. Anyway, fuck that guy. Kane was cool though. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's just a glimpse of like the conversation we had. It's funny as hell. Kane's super down to earth. Uh, am I missing anybody? Is that everybody? I've already talked about the Tim Curry video in another video, so I'm not gonna go into that. Um, we saw the head, the front man from Power Man 5000. Mofo looked just like he did in the 90s. I swear. I was about to what worlds collide. We, I could not remember that damn song. I was like, hey man, that fool made a real popular song. Something about something colliding. I'm like, I don't remember the name of the song. And we over here Googling this shit, trying to follow him around Monster for Lucy. And he's I don't, it's funny, he still got the same fucking hair. This man got a big ass lollipop head with like blonde hair. And I don't know how he did it. He lost us. It just happened. And he he took a turn and we lost and we lost him. We could not find him anymore. But he was cool as shit. Apparently he does a podcast uh, with some people. He does some voiceover work, dude. That was my uh, Monster Palooza experience. That was like cool little conversations I had. It was fun. Well, oh, if you guys are ever going to Monster Palooza and it ends up being in Pasadena again, which it ends up being in every year, I think uh, you guys definitely want to stop by the freaking Michael Myers house in Pasadena. Uh, I've never been over there, and we just stopped by and checked it out. It was fun. They got a little house next door. Um, some lady runs it and charges like five bucks or 15 bucks or something to get the behind the scenes experience. Like, it looks fun. It looks all right. Then they do like backdoor, uh, back, backyard, outdoor movies. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna knock her hustle, dude. That's a pretty sweet hustle. If you live next door to the Michael Myers house, that's a dope ass hustle. Like, but me personally, I probably would have tried to buy that shit. Hey, if the freaking economy crashes and the stock market. <laughs> In the housing market plummets, if I get the Michael Myers house for cheap, that'll be dope. Just saying, that shit'll pay for itself. Hey, I'm gonna say that shit into existence. I'm gonna get the Myers house. 
All right, anyway, so that's all I got. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that I said today. If you enjoyed it, liked it, loved it, whatever you want to say, drop it in the comment section down below. You are now exiting the cinema chop shop. Hope you guys have a magnificent day. And adios, homie.